everybody, I am Jay Shady and you're listening to The Voice of Reason. You know, to me, this show aired four days early. Hell in a Cell. This should have been something that premiered on Halloween. Because this was frightening. This was horror at its finest. This was downright gory, sick to your stomach shit. That's what this whole show was. Your greatest horror movie could not amount to what this show had in horror. Oh, the horror. The horror. This show sucked horribly. Oh, my God. Three hours of my life that, you know, are just going to be a blur for the rest of my life. This was easily, easily the worst pay-per-view of the year. You know, I mean... At least WrestleMania had Undertaker and CM Punk, you know? Yeah, I thought WrestleMania was horrible. But this show just was fucking retarded. Stupid finishes, boring filler matches, and just nothing aside from one match that was even good. And it wasn't even like anything uh, under good, you know, was decent or anything. It went from good... To fucking horrible. Everything else was horrible. When your opening match. When your opening match. Is the match of the night. When your opening match. Which is a tag team match. Is match of the night. You know your show is fucking bad. Now that's not taking anything away. From the opening match. The opening match was great. You had the Usos. Versus uh, the. Uh. Rollins and uh, Reigns from S.H.I.E.L.D. And you had Goldust and Cody Rhodes. And this was a good fucking match. Very exciting. A lot of action between all the three teams. I like this match a lot. You know, if this was a preview of what we were going to get throughout the night, that would have been great. But this wasn't a preview. This was the top. It was only going downhill from here. But aside from all the other shittiness, this was something that was good. And, you know... The Usos, Goldust, who's like, what, 50 years old, you know, out of shape, putting on a better match than the rest of the card. It's just sad. It really is. But uh, Cody Rhodes and Goldust get the victory as they should. You know, we can, I, this is still fresh for me. Not, you know, tired in the slightest of Cody Rhodes and Goldust. I like it. This was a great start to the show. And it all starts sinking from here, folks. So, we get The Miz coming out. This pointless fucking segment. The Miz comes out. He's not able to compete like that's some fucking tragedy. Great, I don't want to see him compete. He's not able to compete. And he calls out Bray Wyatt. And instead, uh, Bray Wyatt's two idiots come out. And uh, this stupid fucking storyline, which is going nowhere with The Miz. Who gives a shit. And uh, the two guys come out. They start beating up The Miz. And then... Kane comes out in the most flattest of fucking returns ever. It wasn't, it even felt like he was returning. It felt like he was just, you know, it was like as if he was just there the other night. It wasn't big. There was nothing spectacular about this return. He just comes out. He has a fucking, like a label on the bottom of the fucking screen that says Kane as if it was expected for him to come out. You know, the audience doesn't give a shit. And, you know, his stuff in the ring didn't help him out either. You know, he's attacking the fucking Wyatt people. He's trying to pick up one of the Wyatt guys for like five fucking seconds. And he's just dancing in the ring with him because he can't even lift him. So he decides, oh, fuck it. I'll just close the line him outside of the ring. That'll do. And then he choke slams the Miz like anybody gives a shit. You know, this was just a retarded return. Just a waste. Of a return. You could have like him at return at Survivor Series with Undertaker. You know, to take on the Whites. But this was just like... Fuck. Nobody gives a shit. Then you got... Fandango coming out. He cuts another... Uh, some retarded fucking promo. So a bunch of senseless shit going on tonight. Um, he cuts a promo. Great Khali comes out. And we get a fucking intergender match. Great Khali and Natalia versus Fandango and Summer Rae. And you know, this was this was the foundation. 
the basics of what you were going to get throughout the night. Just a bunch of fucking bullshit that isn't even worth $1, let alone $60 or whatever the fuck they charge it. I don't know how people could pay for that shit. If you're paying for that shit, you are a fucking idiot, you know? You really are. I am sorry. If you... It's like... I have a problem with the uh, movie ticket prices, you know? Paying $20 to see a fucking IMAX 3D movie, you know? Paying $20 to see a movie that's, what, two fucking hours? To me, that's a fucking ripoff. Let alone 60 fucking bucks for three hours of shit. So, you know, for me, a great fucking movie, like I saw Gravity, loved Gravity, worth 21 bucks? I don't know. You know, but that's something that's great at least. You know, something that I had a great time seeing. It was a great experience. But here, people are paying 60 fucking dollars for just fucking torture. For just strapping themselves in their chair and watching torture. I guess it's, you know, the Halloween season. Everybody likes watching torture and gore and shit. But it's not the good kind of torture. It's the bad kind. It's the one that makes you want to forget that type of torture. The one that makes you want to just gouge your fucking eyeballs out. So you get this stupid match. And um, I, f I think Summer Ray wins. Nobody gives a fuck. Then you get CM Punk versus Ryback versus Paul Heyman in the Hell in a Cell. And they Paul Heyman cuts this stupid fucking monologue. And he um, he's on a lift. And it takes him to the top of the cell so he doesn't have to be inside the cell. Now, if you're in a match, don't you know, don't you have to be in the fucking match. Don't you have to be involved in the match if you're signed to be in a match. So it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. But, you know, I'd rather have had Paul Heyman in the ring because at least we've added something different. Compared to the fucking shit fest that we get, the expected shit fest. Whenever you're getting Ryback in a match. Ryback versus CM Punk was fucking bad. You know, it. Hell in a Cell didn't help it at all. They don't use the cell like they used to. Like Shawn Michaels and Undertaker used to. Like Triple H and Cactus Jack used to. Like Mankind and Undertaker used to. They don't even fucking use the cell. It's just decoration. It's just set dressing. That's all the shit is. You know, so, oh, he uh, ramps his face into the cell. Oh, my God, this is holy shit. Holy shit. I mean, what, the, what am I supposed to do? So you get this boring fucking match. Uh, just, just takes his time and keeps on fucking going, keeps on fucking going. CM Punk does the GTS, ends the match, thank God. And then he climbs to the top of the cell. And it's like, all right. You know, this is the moment that this storyline has worked it up itself up to. This is the climax. This is the fucking payoff, right? And CM Punk takes some kendo sticks to Paul Heyman, beats him up with some kendo sticks, then does the go to sleep. And that's fucking it! Now, you know, CM Punk has been talking for the past, like, month and a half to two months about how he's not just gonna, you know beat Paul Heyman up, he's just, he's gonna destroy him, he's gonna demolish him. Five candlestick shots and a GTS does not count as demolishing and destroying in my book. That counts as, you know, a random Raw or SmackDown post-match beatdown. What the fuck, you know? This just wasn't it. This is something, this beatdown that was supposed to be epic and climactic, it's something that should have went on for like, you know, 7 to 10 minutes of just him doing every fucking thing imaginable to Paul Heyman. Not only kendo sticks, fucking chair shots, fucking breaking him on a fucking table, steel steps, the fucking, the shit that, um, the pliers and the fucking electric thing that Kane did to Shane McMahon's balls. That shit. You know, not just fucking five kendo sticks, go to sleep, yay! That's it. What the fuck is that shit? You know, just a, just a huge fucking letdown. Then you get... Um, I think it was the next match was... I, I'm not sure if this was the next match or something else. I think this was the Real Americans versus the fucking Los Matadors. Just another filler match. On a whole fucking show of filler matches. This was just stupid. 
boring, nobody gives a shit, wasting my motherfucking time, as Al Pacino would say. And it was a waste of my time. And um, Los Matadors get the victory. They do the stupid fucking bullshit. Not, I meant bull space shit. The little fucking bull. No pun intended. Um, the stupid stuff with the bull. That's not even funny to a two-year-old. Yet Michael Cole is saying it's one of the funniest things he's seen all time. You know, funnier than fucking Seinfeld. Funnier than fucking everything. Yeah, funnier than anything of Saturday Night Live. Funny than any comedy at its best, I guess. That's what it is in WWE. And then you get... Um... This. The return, baby! And you know... Cena versus Alberto Del Rio. Now... Let me just say... This match was fucking horrible! Of course it was! It's John fucking Cena! I guess, you know, the man was gone for two months. But he couldn't, in that two months... Take some time to freshen up on his mat skills. Because they weren't there tonight, folks. It was the same old shit that we've been getting for the past 10 years with this goofball. The same exact shit. Gets beat down for 15-20 minutes. Does a couple of moves. Wins the fucking match like that. Now, why he's the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship... Makes no fucking sense to me. He lost the title to Daniel Bryan. Shouldn't he be the number one contender for the WWE Championship? Why is he the number one contender for a belt he hasn't competed for in God knows how fucking long? Now, it was a shock to me that Cena won this match. Because the World Heavyweight Championship is a second rate title. Let's, you know, not tricky trick ourselves into thinking, oh, the World Heavyweight and the WWE are on the same level. Of course they're not. It's a second-rate title, so why would Cena be the champion of a fucking second-rate title? Makes no sense to me. It really doesn't. So I didn't think he was going to win. But, you know, of course, the first fucking match this guy has back, he had a fucking uh, baseball, fucking tennis ball for an elbow, had to get surgery, but the first match back... He's good enough to beat the fucking champion. No ring rust. You know they were trying to make it like, oh, is he coming back too soon? Fuck no, he's not coming back too soon. Because he just fucking does this shit. Superman. Fucking Superman. JBL just trying to twist this Superman shit that we say. Call him Superman in a disheartening way. In a sarcastic way. He's trying to make it now that we're saying it in a uh, celebratory way. Like we're saying, oh, he's as good as Superman. I fucking hate JBL on commentating, man. Um, so yeah, he wins this match. And it's like, why? You know, it's just such phony baloney bullshit. It really is. And it's really dawned on me because... You know, if this was him taking the route of The Undertaker where, you know, he's getting at the end of his career, he's going to slow it down... Drop from the first title, first rate title to the second rate. You know, like The Undertaker did in his later career. He went to the World Heavyweight Championship because he wasn't, you know, a full-time player like that. And if that was what Cena was doing, hey, that's fine. You know, that's just, a, you know, a showing of him, you know, becoming less and less of a franchise guy. Making his way out the door soon, you know. He's just, you know, lessening his role. But, uh, uh that's not how it is when it comes to John Cena. This just feels to me like it's going to be John Cena, World Heavyweight Champion, versus Randy Orton, WWE Champion, in a title unification match at WrestleMania 30. With the McMahon in each corner, and John Cena is going to unify those titles. He's going to save the fucking galaxy. That's all this reeks of to me. Because whenever it's John Cena... You always have to expect the worst, and that is the worst, and that's what you're going to get. It's ridiculous. It really is. So let's move on from John Cena. Then you get the Divas match. Bullshit. AJ Lee versus Brie Bella. Nobody gives a fuck. AJ Lee wins. Lottie fucking da. Then, last but not least, you get the main event. Randy Orton, Dan Bryan, Hell in a Cell, Shawn Michaels, a special guest referee. And this was... Going fine. This was going just fine. 
I liked it more than their last match. But the finish was just like, what? What? What's going on here? Like, why? Is Vince Russo back? Now, you know, I am not like this guy that just like hates everything that Vince Russo has done. You know, the Attitude Era was very overbooked. And you know, that's the charm about it. Is that it was just really overbooked. Sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. Now here is a clear cut case of overbooking for the fucking worse. You just have everything else being more important than the people fighting for the belts themselves right now. And that is the fucking problem. You know, the, I mean, this could be, with all the people involved, this could be a great thing. You know, a great storyline, great climax, but no, they just don't know how to, you know, execute these fucking people in WWE. So you have... Uh, Shawn Michaels doesn't count to three because Dan Bryan kicks out. It's not like he was doing a slow count. Triple H comes out huffing and puffing, yelling at Shawn to count, to end this, to do what he's being told to do. And then uh, Randy Orton's getting on Shawn Michaels' case. And then um, uh, what happens? Fucking uh, Triple H comes into the ring. Oh, no, no, this is what happens. Dan Bryan... Is going to hit uh, Randy Orton or vice versa, and one of them hits Shawn Michaels. Now, Shawn Michaels was like a fucking main event wrestler, right? He took on Bret Hart. He took on Stone Cold, Triple H, The Undertaker. He took on the best of the best. So why the fuck is Shawn Michaels taking a ref bump? How fake is this? Randy Orton or Dan Bryan, I forgot, nudges into Shawn Michaels. And Shawn Michaels is as, is as dead as... As Mike Chioda or Earl Hebner would fucking be if somebody bumped into them. Like, just as soon as he put on that fucking zebra shirt, you're fucking become a delicate mess. As delicate as fucking glass. You know, it just was such bullshit. Shawn Michaels is laid out. You know, he gets kicked out of chokeslams. He's kicked out of last rides. But a little bump from Randy Orton has him fucking seeing stars and shit. So you get this. Triple H goes into the fucking cell. He's trying to revive Shawn Michaels from his, you know, death. And then Daniel Bryan is going to kick uh, Triple H in the face. He does the Shawnee Wizard to Triple H. Shawn Michaels, you know, checks out Triple H. That gives Daniel Bryan the sweet chin music. Randy Orton pins him. One, two, three. And Randy Orton is your champion. Now, it's just like, you know, with the past couple of times with the result of these matches, it's like, okay... You're setting up for something. Okay, I have no problem with the screw job, with the overbooking. But now it's like, alright, I get it already. Let's go fucking somewhere with this, you know? Let's stop just, you know, just making this a whole fucking mystery. Not every match has to be the screw job overbooking finish. And that's what every match is. It's as if we're never going to get a conclusion with this. And... It's just making this shit way too fucking complicated. Way more complicated than it has to be. Like I said, with the previous ones, it was okay, you're going somewhere. But now it's like, where the fuck is this shit going now? I'm just, it's like enough is enough. Stop trying to overreach your goals here. You know, sh what, I, is Shawn Michaels really going to be a full-time player with this storyline? Doesn't he have to do some fucking river adventures, typhoon adventures, whatever the fuck he does now in retirement? Isn't he doing that shit? So why are you having this? This Mike, uh, Michaels screwing over Daniel Bryan. All these layers with Shawn Michaels. I don't know if... Maybe he is going to be a full-time player with this. But, you know, I would think that he's not. So why are you doing this? You know? And we're going to get another match at Survivor Series with this. And, you know, I'm guessing that's going to be the conclusion. Rand Jordan just beating Daniel Bryan. Because they're going to have to set up... For the big title unification, Cena versus Orton at WrestleMania. So this show fucking sucked. Really bad. Really, really fucking bad. If you're not going trick-or-treating Thursday night on Halloween, if you're not hanging out with friends, going to a party, if you don't have any uh, horror movies to watch, you know, you've seen the Fear Fest AMC movies over and over again, give yourself a nice... 
a nice little fucking bowl of popcorn, get some sodas, and watch Hell in a Cell, because you will be frightened. You will be horrified. You will gouge your fucking eyeballs out, because this was just fucking horrible. Play on the word horror. Like that there? Thought you would. All right, so there you go. There's my review. The show sucked. I am Jay Shady, the voice of reason. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later.